What's up, everyone? Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Boss It Podcast. Today, we are going to be chatting about an extremely important topic, and it's going to be about the recession that is looming on the horizon. It sounds like it's going to be unavoidable, and 2023 may be a year of a lot of risk mitigation for many companies. And we've already been seeing it with our Fortune 500 companies. They're starting to do layoffs and not to scare anyone, but it is a reality. And as a small business owner, you need to start preparing yourself and your business so you can not become recession proof because I don't think there is such a thing, but allowing yourself to ride the waves of the recession and hopefully come out the other side, either gaining from the recession or at least staying afloat during the recession and not shutting your business doors. So I have four things that we're going to be doing in our businesses, and I think you should take these tips away as well and use them in your business so that way you can float during the recession as much as possible and not sink. So let's get into it. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna be doing in our businesses is really looking at our pricing of our products. Now, as a product-based business, and if you're a product-based business, listen up, China has already recognized that there is a recession. And if you're getting your products from China or East Asia or India, you have negotiation power now. They are feeling it now and their exports have been decreasing. So this is your time to really look at your numbers and see if you can negotiate with your suppliers overseas if you are a product-based business. And if you've onshored your production or your in-house production, have a look at your costs there and start looking at the supplies that you need and start to negotiate with your suppliers, okay? So that is the first place I go to. That is the largest cost to our business is the cost of product and cost of shipping to bring the product over. And that's where we're starting. So we're starting with the biggest chunk of our business in regards to costs, and we're going to try to reduce those costs. So that's the first thing. And then if you're a service-based business and you are looking at having different vendors as part of your team, say you have contracted out different things to be done as a service-based business, you should start negotiating with those individuals to see what you can do in regards to contracts. If you need to extend them and perhaps get a better price or shorten them because you're not sure if you're going to start doing some of those services on your own. One really quick example is bookkeeping. I know bookkeeping is an extremely important service that's contracted out for many small businesses. You may, I don't advise it actually, because bookkeeping is a very essential part of a business, but you may consider doing some of the tasks on your own or bringing it in-house and that way you can save a few dollars there. So start really analyzing your costs and see where you can negotiate, either in regards to your service delivery or in regards to your product-based business. See where you can reduce those costs and that's what we're going to be doing because we really want to ensure that we are bringing as much back in terms of cost reduction. The next thing that we're going to be doing is having a look at our services and our products. So what are we offering our customers that others are not? So it could be in regards to products. You may have a novel product and no one else on the market provides it. So if that's the case, this may be your chance to increase the price without, of course, scaring your customer away. But if there's a tolerance for inflation, for example, if there's a tolerance right now for inflation of, I don't know, 7%, 8%, because that's what's happening with the milk on our shelves, this is your opportunity to increase the cost for those items that cannot be found anywhere else. So we have a few products in our collection that are specifically for our brand. No one else should be carrying them. They are a copyright in design. If we do have people that copy it, then that happens in the industry. But the point is, for those particular designs, And for our brand association with those designs, we have the ability to increase the price. And you can do that because the customer has a tolerance right now for increasing the price. Now I say try to do this with novel products because if you have something that you've white labeled that can be purchased somewhere else and it's relatively the same thing, then the customer may not come back to your brand. You may lose that customer because they're like, well, I can get it cheaper over here. So I'm just gonna leave this company and go over there. So without losing your customer, look at your product lineup, look at your service lineup and see where can you increase the price without your customer feeling like you have scared them off to another company. With service-based businesses, again, usually people do business with those who they know, like, and trust. So for service-based businesses, you may have the ability to more seamlessly increase the price for your service because 
it's harder for people to leave their provider for whatever service you're providing because they're used to you. And so respectfully, you would tell your clients that we do need to increase our price. You give them a window of time, 30 to 60 days notice, and then it's up to them to come back to and negotiate and the contract. So of course, looking at what you can offer in regards to a novel service, or of course, they know, like, and trust you or a novel product and giving this an opportunity, giving the recession the opportunity to be the excuse to elevate your prices. Tip number three is something we've shared on the podcast in the past, and that's about subscriptions. And I will link here at the top a good video that you guys can go catch with me and Laura talking about money in business and how to save money in business. And this was a tip that she gave us a while ago. I think it was about a few months ago now on looking through your subscriptions. And now you need to do it more than ever. So go through your subscriptions and have a look and see what are you actually using and what are you not using this? And you should do this in your business and in your personal life. I think a lot of us have Netflix and we have other streaming providers like Disney Plus. There's a whole range of providers now for entertainment. Even personally, you need to go through and ask yourself, how often am I streaming on Netflix versus Disney Plus? So those are simple examples in your own personal life. But when it comes to business, you also need to look at the subscriptions and see what you have signed up for. Because of course, there are many options to sign up for many things. A great example I'll share is our Shopify. We use Shopify as our e-commerce platform, and we have lots of apps that are on that platform. Actually, the reason why I had initially even signed up for Shopify was because of the many apps that were available on the platform and made it easier for me to do things that I wanted on the website. And I would sign up for things. And then because it's a small charge and they put it all together in a bundle and they charge you all at once, you may have forgotten about which apps you have signed up for and maybe are not using one of them now because it's been a while and you've realized that it's obsolete or it wasn't working for you. So please go and check all of your subscriptions for your business and do a cleanup. And of course, if you're using those subscriptions, that's great, but see if you can downgrade your selection. Perhaps if you have a middle window there or middle ground that you've subscribed to, perhaps they have a lower model. I know that when the lockdown hit in 2020, we were able to negotiate with QuickBooks, for example, and they gave us three months for free because they knew small businesses were essentially shut down. So they gave us three months for free. And I believe I called back one more time and they gave me another additional month. So of course, these are small amounts of operating dollars that are being saved, but in the long run, it can add up and it may be worth it because when you're in a pinch, you're in a pinch. So go through your subscriptions and see what you can actually save and do it for your personal situation and also for your business. And finally, tip number four, use the 80-20 rule. Use the Pareto principle. We have chatted about this in past episodes and I'll leave a link below this video so you can catch more on the Pareto principle. But basically, the Pareto principle is that 80% of your results, the output, will be accomplished by 20% of your inputs. So that means that for a small business, there are going to be things that you're doing that will provide 80% of the results. So now you need to look at your small business, either a service or as a product-based owner, you need to look at what is providing 80% of your results. And it doesn't have to be 80%. It just has to be those inputs that are providing most of your results. Now I'll give you a really great example. In our business, our product-based business, also Sophia, we have products that are really truly providing the 80% of the profits of the business. And so we know that and our plan for the incoming potential recession is to get rid of the products which are not performing as good as we had hoped to perform. So we're going to eliminate a few of those products by either doing a clearance or doing some type of big sale to clear them out because not only are they taking up operating dollars for storage, they don't sell at a high volume. So we are not going to continue carrying them. So looking at your inventory, if you're a product-based business and say, Hey, where are we making most of our profits? What is that output that is being provided? What input is providing that output? So what product is providing that profit versus what product may not be as profitable or not selling as fast or is not in demand? And what can we stop putting our efforts towards? For service-based owners, we do exactly the same thing. There's likely a service you're providing that is providing you with more profits. 
And so you need to go see now, what is that one thing? What is that one service that I'm providing that could be giving me most of my income? Is it something that I can scale and put more focus there? Or is there something that I can get rid of? Perhaps another service that you are providing that is not as income generating and you can remove that and focus more on that one profit building input. So again, you need to use a Pareto principle because it does hold true, right? You are going to be, of course, putting in more effort for certain things and getting less results. And then there'll be other items that you put in less effort. So 20% of effort and you're going to get 80% results. And that's just the example, the 80-20 rule. It's not a one-to-one ratio. So keeping that in mind while you are looking at your business and ensuring that you are really buckling down on your resources is what we need to do to, of course, stay afloat during a potential recession. Again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And remember, try to apply some of these tips, put it in your calendar and make it an actionable item because before you know it, it's going to be January and who knows what kind of mess we might be in. So not to scare you, we got to be prepared. We need to be tolerant to these incoming changes and we want to make sure that you guys are set up for success. Okay, guys, we'll talk to you guys soon. And remember, make a plan and take action. And yes, you can have it all. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye.